I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Mark Homier, CEO of Max and Row. Mark, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Hi, Ashton. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks. You're very welcome. I'd love to learn a little bit more about Max and Row. First of all, in your words, what is the purpose of the Max and Row pro project and how does it involve blockchain technology? Okay, so the purpose behind Max and Row was to provide a faster, better alternative for token issuers. And it's one that has KYC AML verification built right into the system. Hmm. Uh, so in the beginning of kind of projects coming out within blockchain space, there was a lot of advancement in mixing or intentionally obscuring the source of the funds. And on our team, we said, hey, what about the people who actually want to know what the user, who the users are, or at least want to know that the users have gone some, through some sort of identity verification? And because we believe that's the type of system that's better for high value transactions and high value business. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And now, although you have a KYC, which is unique compared to most blockchains, as a transaction network, does Max and Row so to say, compete directly with something like the Ethereum blockchain? You know, I wouldn't exactly say we compete with Ethereum, but we definitely would appeal to a lot of projects that have launched on Ethereum um, because you do have the advantage of having KYC verification on the chain. Uh, it also is faster. It's new generation technology, so it's more scalable. It's faster. We're actually built on a Tendermint consensus engine so that is uh, going to have a lot of uh, basically good compatibility for future chains and there's it's 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 new uh, you know ethereum is a pretty you know it was one of the forerunners and uh, so yeah we're not really directly competing with ethereum there's a lot of differences but definitely would appeal to a lot of projects that have launched on ethereum mm -hmm. interesting and how much time has been put so far into the development of max and row and where are you guys at in the stage uh, in the market? So, you know, the idea was kicked around a long time ago, but, uh, I, you know, it really wasn't possible without some of the new uh, developments in the, in the platforms themselves. I think really about a year, uh, a little less than a year of uh, kind of really working on getting a solution out there. And the main chain wallet, we, we call it our core, uh, the main chain, a wallet to go along with that and an SDK to use that is going to come out uh, in July. So we're pretty excited. Well, it's coming up really, really soon. So uh, best of luck with that. Now, is you have this KYC platform integrated into the core protocol of the blockchain, it seems. Are there other services besides KYC that are also added into this blockchain network? Um, you, you know, uh, services... Uh, uh, as to what services you can utilize from the blockchain, KYC, we think was the minimum uh, that really everyone should go through in order to be able to transact items and value across uh, different users. And really, we would have the ability to build more on top of the chain as we go. We're kind of waiting, waiting to see how the market reacts and, and we'll actually have new features come out as we develop the main chain and as we onboard users. So. Interesting. And do you, do you foresee any challenges with having KYC on a blockchain? Do you see it as uh, you know, a mandatory KYC, maybe people that are in the blockchain industry for the nature of its anonymity and pseudonymity and how it's been with Ethereum and Bitcoin that they may be opposed to having KYC on the blockchain? Sure. I mean, look, there's a lot of uh, reasons for some industries or some people do not want to uh, have their identity and, and the, the, the history of their transactions ever find the chronicle. That's why people started using mixing or, or anonymizing protocols. But then really blockchain is at a, a stage where it's either mass adoption or just niche. And we believe that for mass adoption, for putting real estate on blockchain, for putting uh, equity ownership on blockchain for a lot of the things that are going to start migrating into this space, it's essential to have identity. Now you want it to be secure. You don't want it to be known. You, you don't want to have pure transparency. 
but you really do want to make sure that everybody in your ecosystem at some point has been identified and that if there was uh, illegal activities happening, you, you could actually pin them down to a person or a business. And that's really what started uh, our idea. And that's where we're going to focus on when we develop. Good point. And another thing that comes to mind when people hear KYC is this shift in the blockchain industry from utility tokens to security tokens. Now, does Max and Row uh, have the ability to have both utility and security tokens on it, or how does that work? Yeah, so I think that's an amazing idea, uh, question just because you know, the industry is so broad and blockchain is, it has such broad implications to actually applying it to real business. Yes, we can do identity, uh, uh, utility tokens right away. And we are working towards having all the functionalities that security tokens need actually built into the chain as well uh, in future releases. And that's going to be on our future is, uh, you know, it's, it's utility tokens, obviously the thing that is going to drive, uh, adoption in the short term, but really securities and having other types of assets connected and the ownership of those assets on the chain is what's going to fuel the long-term growth in the long term. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, I was reading through your website and I saw the Max and Row Global Meetups. What are these world meetups for and who are you looking to attract to these meetups? So the meetups are to build the community. You know, the, I think one of the best things about blockchain is the community building around it. Uh, and the meetups are for people who maybe they're considering doing a token project and they don't know much about it. They want to understand more. Uh, maybe there are people that are already in, in other, they've invested in different types of tokens or they're, they're, they already own some and they want to expand. Uh, so it's really about learning more about the blockchain. And of course, how are, of course, it's, Selfish, it's our block uh, meetups. So they're more about how to use Max and Row uh, to issue tokens and how to use the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you're looking for more developers to develop decentralized applications on Max and Row. You know, what does the developer ecosystem look like? If you're looking for real estate applications or microfinancing and things like this, really nobody can use applications unless there is a strong development community that's built dApps on top of Max and Row, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, we're taking a bit of a, a different approach to bringing developers on. Uh, when we built the platform, we're actually building it with modules uh, over time. And so originally, you know, it's more of a utility to it, but over time we're building more and more modules that the developers themselves can um you know, utilize in their platforms. And really we're trying to make it much more user-friendly. Right now, if you want to issue a token on Ethereum, you really do need to have some technical background. You really need to have some technical knowledge of how to do it. You have security uh, challenges of getting your smart contracts right. We want to take it down a level in terms of complexity. And we're just huge capitalists in the token space. In other, in other words, like cap the capitalist market should just be allowed to grow and we want everybody to be able to issue their tokens on our network um, with that added safety that uh, you know people have, all the users have gone through some sort of a verification mm -hmm. very interesting and now did you guys release a max and row utility token or security token and did you have an offering for that and how did you build up the capital for the foundation uh, you know, the foundation itself is privately funded and it's for donations from different interested parties. We haven't done an ICO and we don't plan on doing an STO or an ICO in the future. But we are self-funding and we have, you know, the funny thing was as soon as you attached uh, identity uh, to uh, coins, we found that there was just a tremendous amount of interest, so much so that uh, we, we really kind of have to turn people away from getting involved more than we have to look for people. Wow, that's really interesting. And now, what is the business model or how is the company going to grow and sustain itself moving forward? Is there uh, like a software as a service application based revenue model to it or does the KYC have some cost to it? How is the company going to drive revenues? Uh, so in terms of future revenue growth, we are going to have uh, the platforms themselves be our revenue generators. 
Um, and the original, you know, we have enough funding to develop all the platforms ourselves right now, so that's not a real concern for us. The real thing is, uh, you know, digital assets, securities. People are really talking about these, and some people are getting into it a little bit. There's, there's a lot of uh, what I'd call initial interest in the industry, uh, but uh, those are not so easy. Those platforms aren't, and so we're focusing on, you know, two or three years down the road. Uh, when people want to list their houses on a blockchain network, when people want to sell their commercial property, when people want to issue securities that actually our platform is one of the friendliest and easiest uh, to use. And we're enabling the agents and the different B2B uh, platforms to actually be issued on our token platform as well. That's good to have a long-term approach. Now, you, men- yep. you mentioned the mainnet is coming out in July here, which is one month away. What does that mean for the end users? What is going to happen, you know, with Max and Row as the mainnet comes out? So the mainnet uh, releases with the wallet and the SDK, uh, and we get to have people start transacting in it. People can hold the tokens in it. Uh, they can go through KYC before they do that, of course. And then, really, we already have about I want to say five to ten projects that are going to issue based on the MXW platform and mainnet. So we're going to, it, with those platforms, we're going to basically listen to the users in terms of how we uh, put in new functions in the future. But it is it is more of a platform ideas, and it kind of it it we did you know take away a little bit on the flexibility with the emphasis on the ease of use for the businesses that want to issue on there. In other words, you'll be able to issue your tokens through your cell phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but it may or may, it may, you know, we'll have to enhance that ability to put functions into that launch process over time. So, mm-hmm. And is that what your development team's focus will be uh, in the next six months after the launch? Yep. Yep. It's really just once you've got people using this, once the businesses are starting to issue their tokens on your network, then you get a lot of end user feedback. uh, And we have our product team uh, in place to really take what people are needing and build that into modules. Uh, Again, we're built on Tendermint with some some of the Cosmos uh, protocol. We, We actually used some modules to build some of our tech. And so it, it's a little bit on that, whereas you can make modules and people can action uh, and use those modules rather than a completely open smart contract language. So we believe that's a good development for the B2B user or for the person that wants to issue on their existing uh, business platform or business. Yeah, that sounds a lot more user friendly and that will of course help with adoption. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so. now what, do you foresee as the challenges or the most challenging thing after you launch the mainnet in terms of growing the business? Uh, you know, it's so funny. Uh, uh, I think a lot of businesses are looking for users right away. We actually have a lot of users and we have a lot of interest. The biggest thing is the regulatory uh, scope of this. You know, regulation is built for centralized nationalist kind of idea. Each region has their own. Uh, way of dealing with the different regulations across the world. And that regulatory landscape is probably the biggest challenge for us because we want to be uh, KYC, AML compliant. Uh, we want that to be automated. We don't want to have any you know, illegal activities done with our technology, and yet we want to be friendly for businesses to use. So, you know, having being that blockchains in essence are global, we instantly have the challenge of, you know, making sure we're complying with all those mm-hmm. regulations the regions. It's an interesting twist. Now, are you guys looking for more investors, team members, or just users? And how can they find out more about Max and Row? Um, not, not really investors at all, uh, but definitely team members. Um, you know, we have some very ambitious plans for both digital assets and securities platforms. Uh, we're building a, a really big team here in KL. We have a team in Taipei. Uh, you know, we're even looking into Europe for building another team. So uh, talent is a, is probably the biggest challenge, if you said, beyond regulation. It's really just talent. It's having people work uh, 
work on the protocols themselves. And we just really hope blockchain in general just gets a lot more software engineers involved, a lot more businesses involved, so that the entire ecosystem can grow. Because whenever uh, any, in, any interest happens in the industry, it's good for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Great. And how can they find out more about the project? So MXW official on Telegram, uh, MXW.1 for the web. And uh, if, I'm sure if you just, you know, search Max and Roll on any platform, you know, our, our websites can come up. Awesome. I'll leave the links to that in the description box below. That's all the time we have. But it's been a pleasure speaking to you, Mark, uh, and all of the best on the mainnet launch of Max and Row and moving forward. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Ashton. It's been my pleasure, and I hope we can do it again soon.